Hey guys, welcome back to the layout once again, and today we're going to take a look at how to make this road. Um, we're going to ignore the grade crossings today, that'll be a separate video. So to start off, we're going to cut some cork and move on from there. So the first thing I had to do was lay a base for the road, uh, because obviously the tracks themselves are up on some cork. So I decided that some HO scale cork that I cut into some sections like you see there, and then uh, a section of N scale cork on top of that would get me close to rail height, um, which is really what I was aiming for. And we'll see later in the video that the grade crossing panels that I chose to use were uh, four hundredths of an inch thick. And conveniently, the tape that I'm going to use is also four hundredths of an inch thick, uh, which means that using the N scale cork and the HO scale cork on top of each other, plus the tape, um, will bring the road height perfectly up to rail level. So I had to do a bit of testing to make sure that that would work, um, and we'll see later in the video how that all comes together. Um, but once I had decided to go ahead and, and use the HO and N scale cork, I used my Liquid Nails heavy duty adhesive and then glued down the HO scale pieces, and obviously then next I glued down the N scale sections. So what I haven't mentioned yet is road width, and what I went for here, kind of arbitrarily, is a four inch total width. And I think that's a bit wider than your normal road. Um, you can go online and look up lane width dimensions in you know the prototype world and then scale them down. And four inches is a bit wide, but I'm modeling this road off of Annan Street in Crawford, Nebraska. And if you look at some aerial photos of that, uh, it looks like it flares out just a bit as it gets to the grade crossing and I would imagine that's because there are frequently trucks for the railroad turning onto or off of uh, the road. So I used a bit of artistic license and just sort of guessed on the road width and uh, I went with four inches which once again is a little bit wider than I think I'd go with if it were just a normal two lane low density road. Now one other thing I did was add a little um, section for what will eventually be the actual grade crossing gates and lights. So I had to build up the ground around it just a bit, so I cut another section of cork and then glued that off to the side. And then uh, as everything dried, I weighted it down with some random objects, which eventually all fell off the layout, but no harm, no foul. And I just wanted to make sure that the cork dried as flat as possible. So next, with the cork all installed, I wanted to smooth off the sides of the road and really give uh, a shoulder, or, or the base for a shoulder of the road, um, because the cork drops off pretty dramatically. So I wanted to smooth that into the flat surrounding scenery, and I took some 3M patch plus primer, which is really cool material. Um, it's kind of foam-like when it dries, and it doesn't crack at all. So it's also very lightweight, which is convenient. And I just took my putty knife and smeared some of that in um, on all sides of the road. Here you can see me uh, blending in the, the little built up platform for our grade crossing. You can see that I taped the, the edges of the cork because what I'm gonna do next is put down some thick tape to define the limits of the road. And I wanna make sure that that tape actually sticks to the cork. So I didn't want any dusty, chalky, uh, putty up on the cork, which is why I put the tape over there. And once it was all dry, I then took a drywall sanding block and just sanded down any bumps or ridges that there were just to smooth it in a little bit better. So now is the fun part, which is prepping for and then actually pouring or spreading the road. And to do this, I took some 3M VHB tape, which is just sort of this thicker, uh, double-sided, heavy-duty industrial uh, tape. And as I mentioned earlier in the video, it's just about the perfect height for the grade crossings. Um, so when I put this on top of our, our top layer of N-scale cork, it matches up perfectly with the 4 hundredths of an inch grade crossing panels which I had cut out because the tape is the exact same thickness. So I just ran this along the edge of the cork which was already roughly the, the, the outline of our road and I made sure that the tape was parallel. I also then put tape on the front edge of the layout and then for the backdrop I just put down some masking tape. I then set the grade crossing panels, although unpainted at this point, I just set them 
where they will be situated eventually, and then I taped them in place just to make sure I didn't get too much goop on top of the grade crossings. And then, once again, taking a putty knife, the smaller one to spread it onto the cork, and then a larger one to actually spread the uh, 3M putty around. Uh, I just moved it around until it was as smooth as possible and as level as possible, and I made sure that there weren't any gouges or holes like that uh, that I would have to potentially fill in later because less work is just an easier time. Um, but this stuff's really easy to work with, so you can always go back in and add a bit more if for whatever reason there's like a chunk or, as I mentioned, some sort of gouge left. Then while I still had the thick tape down, I sanded the surface just to make sure that everything looked right, because once again, if it did not, then I could go back in and add a bit more. Um, but my first application was actually pretty good, so that was all I had to do. And then I peeled away the tape, and then we were just about ready to paint it. And you'll see that even after I removed the grade crossing panels, uh, they fit back in very snugly which was exactly what I was going for. So that was, that was a nice little treat because there was no guarantee um, that those were gonna come out smoothly, but this 3M uh, patch plus primer material does a good job of not chipping. Now it's time for some paint, and for this I just used some cheap artist acrylics. I used a combo of white, black, and tan, and these are just paints that I picked up from Michaels or any art supply store. And then using a cosmetic brush, or it's more of a sponge actually, a cosmetic sponge, I dabbed the paint mixture onto the surface um, and it went on really easily. And I like to use the cosmetic sponge because it has a bit of, of grit and texture to it, which really mimics the asphalt texture quite well. So I continued to put the gray on with the cosmetic sponge until it looked good. And uh, you can just keep adding as much paint as you want and change the color, which is a good thing. And I finally got to the point where I liked it. Then it was time to add road lines. And for this, I just cut out a really thin strip of masking tape to space the center lines, because we're gonna have double yellow lines on uh, both, you know, towards the wall and towards the fascia, so on both sections of road there. So I laid down first the, the center strip of tape. And then to finish off the masking job, I just took full pieces of masking tape um, and I placed that on either side of that center strip uh, to, to mark the thickness of the yellow line that I wanted. And this I just sort of eyeballed. I don't really know any sort of dimensions or measurements, but I just put the tape down until it looked like it would produce a realistic looking line. And then using prototype photos from some grade crossings in and around Crawford, I made sure to stop the double yellow lines a little short of the grade crossing because they don't go all the way up to the crossings themselves. There's a bit of just empty, bare asphalt uh, before it gets to the tracks. And then to paint the road lines, I used the exact same method with the cosmetic sponge, only this time I was using some yellow paint. And then you'll see as I peel back the tape there, um, I went for a very spotty, weathered look with much of the yellow paint chipped away. And then in this final shot, you'll see I did the exact same thing with the yellow stop, or sorry, the white stop line. And uh, once again, I went for a weathered and chipped paint look. And then you'll also see I added some oil spots. And these I did with some diluted acrylics of brown and black color. And I just dotted them until I thought it looked good. And that was that. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. If you have any questions, of course, leave those below. And also keep in mind that I will have a separate video on making the grade crossing panels, which you see in these closing shots. So as always, thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned, and I'll see you guys next time.